Ruth Borgabello, welcome Thanks. and congratulations on The Space Between. Thanks, Jim. Which is a beautiful film, a very lyrical film, very, very delicately directed. What's your movie about? Oh, my movie at the heart of the movie is about love and loss and sort of the collision of the two um, that happen at the same time, which sometimes happens in life <laughs> and is a kind of a very confusing juxtaposition to deal with, I think. Um, the story basically follows the character of Marco, who's sort of an ex-chef. Uh, he's given up on his passion and talent for being a chef, sort of coming back to Italy to look after his father, who's not well and is sort of very grumpy and a bit heavy for him in his life. And like many Italians today, he's sort of become a little bit blocked in his situation and lost track of his dreams and sort of the courage to pursue them. And in the beginning of the film, he has an opportunity to come to Melbourne, um, but he's not so keen to take it. And a, a tragedy basically throws his whole life into sort of turmoil and, and chaos. Um, yeah, now this whole thing, firstly, about you want this character to reflect what's going on in Italy at the moment. This is very interesting. Can you just tell us about that situation sure. and how you observed it and why you care? Sure, sure. So initially, I mean, I'm half Italian. My partner is Italian and the story is a little bit inspired by when we first met as well. Uh, he's lived in Australia for many years, but going back and forth from Italy and Australia, we've sort of obviously had time to sort of tap into what's going on in Italy in the moment and see the deterioration of that as well. And I guess over the last 10 years or so, it's become really tough for Italians in their 20s, 30s, 40s to really follow their dreams, to dream out loud, to even sort of have that possibility to think that they could really change or transform their life for the better. Whereas in Australia, I think we're sort of born with that spirit that we can do anything, nothing's impossible. But I guess this kind of attitude and depression a little bit got to us because we see so much potential in our friends and, and their passions. And you think of Italy and the passion. Uh I wrote it down as him being, as Marco, the character, being a part-time chef, living a part-time life. Yes. He has allowed loss to stymie yes. his life. Yes, that's a great way to put it, actually. He's sort of doing it on his own time, but he's not actually doing it professionally to get paid. Um, yeah, so in a way, we, we, we had this story and the inspiration for this story of this sort of collision between love and loss. But then we looked at Marco and thought, actually, his journey and his situation is Italy at the moment. It's kind of in trying to sort of reconcile sort of the, the opportunities and dreams of the past with this difficult crisis that they're in now and, and really sort of break through to see what's in front of them and the opportunities. Now, just tell us about the title. Hmm. Because that's a very interesting title. We don't usually get titles that interesting. Tell us the meaning behind the title, The Space Between. The Space Between. I saw this quote once a long time ago that said something about the difficulty of sort of tra traversing the space between dreams and reality. And I think I felt like that journey is interesting because we focus so much on our life situation now and where we want to be, but what happens in that space between? And for me, in the with the story I wanted to tell, I thought that space between really kind of signifies Marco's journey and also the space between love and loss too. And I, th I think you navigate it very, very deftly and with beautiful observational skill one of the things that I love about the film is the use of dreams. Hmm. You've taken a big risk here <laughs> yes. by imbuing the character with the ability to have these slightly prophetic dreams. It's very easy to mishandle that. Mm. How did you have to fight with yourself about restraining what you did and how you did that? Uh, it's something that's important to me and it's something that happens often to me in my life. I have dreams that are prophetic and I think even before I met my husband we'd both dreamt of each other so I guess it was sort of inspired by that as well, which yes, doesn't sound believable. Um, so it is something that we had to do in a subtle way, in a true way. It was very important. But I felt like with the character of Marco, because he's not very expressive, I felt like the dreams were a good way to get inside his head and his subconscious and sort of give a bit of breathing space to the audience as well just to kind of see what was going on deeply. Now now you say something very interesting in this film through the drama we're in a brief relationship or what we imagine is a brief relationship. He meets uh, this Australian woman played by Maeve Dermody. Yes. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Perfect. <laughs> 
And just his interaction with her basically changes, helps change his outlook on life. I didn't think it was allowed to say that short-term relationships with people can be deep and meaningful. <laughs> and you do hold off on the romantic element for quite a while in this film, which is another discipline that you've imposed on yourself. Can you just tell me about navigating the dynamics of that relationship, which is crucial to the film? Yes, yes. I think that's something also the intention behind it is exploring about this connection that can be formed in a very short space of time between two people and what is the point that you actually fall in love. And I think with them it's this deep connection because of what's happening. Initially Olivia doesn't know that Marco has suffered this trauma so she's kind of innocent and naive and he's sort of attracted to that too because he can escape in it for a little while. But I think once they do reveal the truth about themselves it's almost like they put a mirror up to each other and that's the point that they fall in love. So for me it was important to hold off on that side of things until it was the right moment for them to actually reveal themselves, I guess, in that way. Now, what kind of release is this film getting? Uh, it's coming out for the Love Arts or Italian Film Festival now, so it will tour Australia-wide. Um, and after that, it should have release in Australia through Palace Films. Um, and it's coming out in Italy towards the end of the year. We're just waiting on exact release dates now. Okay, how long did it take you to make this movie? Eight years. <laughs> a very long birth. <laughs> That is a long time. Yes. Um, was it harder to make than it should have been? Uh, All films are hard to make. Yes, yes. But was this more difficult than it needed to be? I think so, definitely. Tell me why. It was very difficult because, probably because it is the first co-production between the two, when it's never been done before, you're sort of... Italy and Australia. Yes. You're fighting against attitudes and fear, maybe, that it's not. it's too difficult to do. So I think it took a long time to sort of trying to configure that um, co-production itself. Why and was that important? Why not just make it an Australian movie? It could have been. And use green screen. We had a lot of funding from Italy. I was joking, I was joking <laughs> yeah. about the green screen. But, but, but why the co-production? Yeah, the location. Originally the film was set in Australia, actually. But then the more I developed it, the more I felt strongly it had to be Italy. The location is very important. It's almost a character in the film. And I think it's kind of a poetic backdrop, really, with the contrast. In We, we sort of travel from the mountains to the sea and the countryside. And that, that was a really great way for me to explore Markle's journey and the transition that he makes. Right. Um, but for me, I'm half Italian, half Australian, and I really wanted to create the first co-production. I really wanted to create this bridge between the two countries. You wanted to, you wanted to do it. It wasn't easy, but we had the mm. willingness, and, and very much from Italy too. The, the Italian government was very supportive and really wanted to build this connection between the two countries. So, so well, you mentioned before about attitudes, stiff attitudes against yes. this. Was it from this side or from... It was harder from Australia, I have to say. It's just the processes in Australia are quite different to Italy. You know, Australia's square, Italy's round. So to fit the two is, is always challenging. Um, I apologise for the grimacing on my face, <laughs> but I'm hearing this all the time. Yeah. Just, ju um, just in terms of attitude, you are too young to be dealing with cultural cringe in the Australian film industry, yet it's still there. Mm. Why the resistance? Oh, I don't know. I think culturally we try to, Australia typically tries to work more with England and Canada. Maybe it's the language. Yeah. I, but there's so many Italians here. There's, there's a million just in Melbourne. So I feel like for me it's a natural thing. There's, and it's amazing to, to be able to have an audience in Italy and Australia for a film automatically. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just make the point that it's sad to hear that on top of having to produce a film in another country that you also had to deal with just that mindset, which one would have expected by now would have been a little bit more lubricated and a little bit more We live supportive. in a global world yeah. too. <laughs> it should, yeah. I mean, the co-production exists, so obviously the two governments had decided and had that intention, but I do feel that in Italy there was more sort of desire to make it work. I, I don't know. There's a real fascination from them. for it. They love Australian cinema. So that was really nice for me as well to have that passion coming back to, to Australia. Did you have a lot of screaming matches during production meetings over the amount of smoking that takes oh, place? 
place in the movie. Because we did it in Italy, no. <laughs> um, but I think our distributor, when they first saw the film, said, yes, there's too much smoking. And I think I think probably if I if I shot the film again, I would just take out smoking. <laughs> we, we, we wanted to use it as a, as, an, a, as a tool because he's going through this grief and he's not so expressive, so that was his way. But I'm very anti-smoking myself, okay, okay. so... Yeah. But it was natural for the character. And very natural in Italy in the okay. setting, yeah. That, look, I'll just get onto the symbolism now just quickly. That actually just dovetails beautifully into the other symbols of the film, where, for instance, you've got an old-fashioned record player, an analogue one rather than a CD player or MP3s or whatever. You also have his car that keeps conking out. Now, I, I know that that's kind of a bit of a... It's a funny thing to see, but you also intended that as a subtle bit of symbolism as well, didn't you? Yes, exactly, definitely. The car especially always breaking down, you know, it's mm. like the, he just can't move forward. It keeps stopping him, mm. there's obstacles. Well, let me just, mm. sorry, but let me just say for the record that I think that, that in 2016, people are intelligent enough to know that when they see a character on screen smoking, that it's not an advertisement for the cigarette companies, it's just... A character smoking. Yes. And that's it. Yes, exactly. And, and an Italian character, especially for this character, that, that's part of his character, definitely his personality. Now, there's a very big laugh in the film. Um, are Italians really that bad at keeping appointments? Oh, yes. <laughs> are they really like the genes? They just live on their own? Especially in yeah. Rome, definitely. Okay. I think it's because it's so chaotic in Rome, it takes so long to get anywhere. So mm -hmm. they just kind of forgive you. Where we were in northern Italy, a little bit less. But mm. yes, no, no. They get and, distracted. And um, listen, I have to ask you about the involvement of Distasio, which gets, well, pretty prominent um, mentions in this film. Why didn't you just invent a fictitious restaurant? Why why did you go with a real one? Is it product placement, Ruth? It's a funny story. <laughs> I did actually, originally I wrote the character inspired by Distasio. I had the character in the film and the story, but I was feeling like he was a bit younger and I wasn't really finding who he was and really to have that contrast to bring out Marco's ego in a way in the film. And then I read this article in Melbourne Broadsheet about Ronaldo Distasio and his passion for Italy. And it, it made me cry, actually, when I read the article. I just felt like, oh, he's got the same sort of passion and connection to Italy that I have and this intention to sort of bring it to Australia. And so I tried to contact him, but it's almost like a CIA around him. It's very hard to get to him. So we didn't have any luck and I just... I had the character as a completely different name in the restaurant and everything. And then I was back in Melbourne. Flavio actually came over for the Portsea Polo. Peroni brought him out. Um, and a friend of ours who has a restaurant happened to bump into Ronnie on the street and told him about the film. And he said, oh, I have to meet this Ruth. And so we got called in and Flavio happened to be with me. So we had this beautiful lunch there and got to talk to Ronnie and told him about the story. And he said, and I told him that I had this character inspired by him. And he said, I, I have to support you. So in any way I can. Well, how is that? Did they a, As a sponsor. The, okay. Yeah, they contributed. So okay. just to, to, to the budget, to the production budget. Yes, yes. They helped produce the film, yes. you have to be honest there. Yes. Okay, that's okay, okay. Yes. It's not an unusual thing to say. And again, Ruth, I make the point that in eras past we used to, you know, look at Gog at product placement in films, oh how dare they. These days I think people are a lot more relaxed given that we live in the real world. Yes. If you live in the real world, having real brands from the real world shouldn't really shock us that much. Uh, by now, but I thought it was just important to mention that yeah. just, to, just, just to cover it, it. It was sort of, for me, uh, integrity is really important. So the fact that it happened naturally for me was something that wasn't forced or imposed on the You didn't go looking for a sponsor? No, no, definitely not. It mm. just He just kind of came to us at the right moment and he was already in the film in a way. Mm. We just changed the name. <laughs> now, now, as a young filmmaker, this is your first film, first feature film. How uh, does the Australian film industry firmament look for you what are your feelings do you want to keep making films are you encouraged by the film climate at the moment just give me some observations I think it's a great question having made this film in Italy as a first-time director I feel like there's a lot that I've gained from the Italian industry that I think I would love to really apply to Australia um, 
The first thing is that in, in Italy there is a first and second time film fund, so especially for first and second time directors, which in Australia does not exist, which is I, I find incredible. In Italy, they're all about giving you an opportunity. So your first film, and once you do your first film, they'll support you. Even if it hasn't done extremely well in the box office, they really give you that opportunity. Let's help you do another film. Then at least you're on your way to a career. Then you compete with the big guys, which I think is fair. And that way, there's a lot of incentives for Italian producers to work with first-time directors. If you knock on the door in Australia, it's much harder than it is in Italy. So they have a way to finance the film. So I would love it if that could happen in Australia eventually. Because it avoids the horrible syndrome of someone making maybe a really good film their first time out, and for whatever reasons, it flops, and you never hear of them again. Yes. Or you hear from them in and six years' time learn as second lessons. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it's, yeah, it's just, I feel like you almost have to be rich in Australia to make a film, and I don't think that's right. I think you should have, I mean, even with, the, with Screen Australia, with the government credits that you need, you need to have had your short film in one of the top film festivals. So it feels quite elitist to actually get your first feature film made, and I think the door should be open to everybody to have that opportunity. I mean, the greatest stories are from people that don't have money, that have struggled. So I think, I really hope that, maybe that, that lesson could be learnt for Australia would, would be incredible. Did you find that there were too many rules there? Too A lot many? of rules, yeah, not flexible in, in terms of rules. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a way of working, I guess. It's just the difference. Just to close, I, I'm finding it quite um, um, amusingly and also distressingly ironic that of the two cultures, Australia and Italy, Italy is meant to be the absolute basket case and Australia is meant to be, well, I don't know what Australia is, I guess we are too, but we're not quite as far down the road, that yes. you, as a filmmaker, actually had a more positive, positive, supportive experience from the Italian side of the fence rather than the Australian side. It's a bit so, ironic, isn't it? Okay. Is that, <laughs> yeah. That's true? I think it's something to do with, I mean, I love Australia and I'm very inspired by, you know, and a Screen Australia has been great in terms of making the co-production work as well. They were very supportive and our lawyer here really made that happen. Um, but I think it's something to do with the history of art as well. In Italy, they see you as an artist, so they really support you to be an artist. Whereas in Australia... It's a little bit harder, I think. It's not so natural for us just to, to have the freedom to, to be an artist and, and start out, maybe. Okay. So, 